artists have already started to arrive. Just ran into one on the ferry. A famous artist, no less, but we'll see if we can rope him into an interview later on. Now, let's uh, go to the phones. Caller, you're on KBFFM. Hi, Pat. It's Rose. Why, hello, Rose. What's on your mind? I know who that famous artist was. It was Alan Wake, wasn't it? He's my favorite writer. Well, Rose, I... I just saw him at the diner. Oh, I am so excited he's here. I'm sure he's glad to be here, too. Well, folks, I guess the secret's out. This is Pat Main on KBFFM. And now, some music. Well, I was just outside for a breath of fresh air, and what a night. I, I know most of you are probably in your beds by now, but if you're still up and around, take a moment. Step outside for a spell and breathe in deep. Mm, the weather is absolutely still. The sky is crystal clear. It's like the forest is quietly breathing along with you. As you listeners know, I'm a, I'm a night owl, and it's on nights like this I wish I wasn't cooped up in the studio. Uh, makes an old man like me wish I could just roam wild. <laughs> but here I am, and it would keep you company all night long if I weren't. Uh, it looks like uh, I'm not the only one staying up late. Caller, you're on the air. Hey, Pat, it's Maurice Horton. Hello, Maurice. What are you up to? Well, I was just taking Toby on his walkies. Oh, isn't it beautiful out there? Sure, but... Pat, the reason I called is that Toby heard something rustling in the undergrowth and took off after it, and I couldn't find him. Probably a rabbit. Sure. Toby loves rabbits. Well, sure. Anyway, I figured that, you know, if anyone runs into Toby, they could grab him. My number's on his collar. And Toby's a friendly dog? Oh, Toby loves people. Usually he comes back, but we, we were pretty far from home, and it sounds like he went pretty wild there. Great dog, but he's just too dumb for his own good. <laughs> well, Maurice, it's out there now. Hope Toby comes home soon. Yeah, thanks, Pat. You have a good night now. Well, folks, it's been another long night, and uh, it's about time for me to sign off for a while. God knows I need my beauty sleep. <laughs> uh, just one more item before I go. It's been a busy night for the sheriff's department. We've had a few broken windows, even a report of shots fired on Main Street. Deputies Mulligan and Thornton had to deal with two intoxicated young men who were celebrating the completion of their Deer Fest float. Now, folks, we get this every year. I know it's exciting that the big day's almost here, but let's save it for the party and leave the gunplay for the shooting competition, huh? There's no point in getting all worked up yet. Welcome back to the show, folks. As promised, our very own Dr. Nelson has just parked his rear end in the studio. Doc, what's your Deer Fest plan like? My plan? Well, you make it sound a lot more organized than I ever seem to manage. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, you old <laughs> No plan, really. Just taking the atmosphere. I'm getting a little too rickety to do much more than that, you know. Oh, tell me about it. No sack race for us older gentlemen, huh? <laughs> yes, exactly, Pat. But I'm gonna check out the parade, of course. And I'll be one of the pie contest judges, too. <laughs> uh, well, that takes a different kind of constitution. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's my kind of exercise. Now, Doc, seriously, you're in pretty good shape, though. You're the outdoors type. I, I know for a fact you're an avid fisherman. That's right. Matter of fact, just caught a heck of a largemouth bass early this morning. But you're not taking part in the fishing contest? No, no, not this year. Um, see, Pat, I'm just not that competitive anymore. Now I just like to take my time and enjoy the peace of it. It's no fun if I need to worry about what I'm catching, you know? Well, <laughs> considering your track record, the participants are probably pretty happy you feel that way. <laughs> well, Pat, that's kind of you to say. I just stepped outside to catch a breath of fresh air. Let me tell you, the weather's getting heavy. Nights like this make me especially glad I'm here talking to you and not home in bed. Once, once the weather takes a turn like this, I can't sleep at all. It's all tangled bed sheets and dark thoughts, punctuated by the occasional plunge into nightmare. <laughs> is it just me? Well, perhaps it is. 
But I hope I can make the night a little bit easier to get through. Calmer, you're on KBF FM. Hey, Pat, it's Walt Snyder. What's on your mind, Walt? Well, I am the way you are, but, well, uh, I can't sleep either, you know? Uh, I've just been staring out the window here, trying to make sense of it all, but, uh, I ain't been drinking either, you know? I just... Well, you sound like a man with a problem, Walt. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I had a, uh, you know, uh, argument with Danny, you know, Danny, and, uh, then I got in trouble with the law, you know, and, um, I'm just, well... I heard something like that, Walt. Yeah, well, you know, he's, uh, you know, Danny's my best friend, and, uh, they let me out on bail today. And now I'm just alone here at the window, you know, waiting. Man, and there's something in the air tonight, man. Uh, I was just outside looking up at the sky above our broadcast tower thinking the same thing. What are you waiting for, Walt? I don't know. I, you know, something's gonna happen. You know, I gotta, I gotta, I, I think I better go. Well, Walt, uh, maybe... No, th thanks, Pat. Uh, well... Good luck to you, Walt. Hang in there. Uh, let's take a little break, folks. This weather's really something else, huh? And here's another call. You're on KBFFM with Pat Main. It's Milt Peabody, Pat. What's on your mind, Milt? Well, I live near the trailer park, Pat, and there's a big ruckus going on over there. Well, that's just up the road from me, too. Uh, what's going on, do you know? I don't know, but there's a bunch of police cars there, lots of sirens, a helicopter buzzing around, and I think I heard some gunshots. Gunshots? Yes, sir, like from a pistol. So can you find out what's going on? Because it's just next door, and they're popping off guns there. They're still shooting? No, it was maybe 10, 15 minutes ago. It sounds serious, Pat. I'm telling you, it don't sound like no party. Well, I'm certainly going to give the station a call, Milt. Okay. You'll hear it here as soon as I hear from them. Okay, thanks. And we have another caller. You're on the air. Pat, it's Lorna Miles. Oh, hello, Lorna. What do you have for us? Well, I just don't see why the cops bother with the trailer park. What do you mean? It's a trailer park. Of course you're going to have trouble in a place like that. I mean, what do you expect? The sheriff should be helping us normal citizens instead of wasting resources on those people. Well... Let the trash sort themselves out. I'm sorry, but my granddaddy settled in Bright Falls in 1911. Well, thank you very much for that uh, compassionate viewpoint, Lorna. This is Pat Main, and you're listening to KBF-FM. Folks, I want to apologize for kind of abandoning you to that looping music track last night, but I was detained. You see, I encountered a big-shot G-man with an itchy trigger finger who could use a, a lesson in manners and a boot in the ass, not necessarily in that order either. Now, folks, I know I'm not being very informative here, and I apologize for that. I really should just keep quiet, but... I'm just so peeved right now, because some people just shouldn't be carrying badges. And I'm just glad that our Sheriff Breaker was there to straighten things out. And if someone I met last night is listening, let me just say, I'm sorry if my mouth got you in trouble. I'm pretty sure you're not the bad guy here. Godspeed, son. I hope you know what you're doing. Now, on a lighter note, I'll be talking to Dr. Nelson all morning. But first, a little music. Welcome back to KBF FM. Hope you enjoyed that tune. Now, Doc, you were talking about life and finding that special someone, that soulmate. Well, you were talking about that. I was saying I don't buy it. Oh, well, see, to me, that's strange, because I always pegged you as a hopeless romantic. <laughs> you got me there, Pat. But I think love's where you look for it. And you need to do a lot of looking, sure. But the idea that there's that one special person out there for you, and if you miss that chance, it's gone forever, and you're forever incomplete. I mean, isn't that depressing? Or heck, childish, even? Hey, there's plenty of fish in the sea. 
<laughs> and apparently a fisherman has a fishing analogy for everything. But what you're saying, isn't that a little harsh? Well, no. What I am saying is that your potential for finding that connection isn't limited to what's essentially a chance encounter. How is that harsh? Yeah, well, I guess that's a nice thought, but let me say something personal here. Okay. Now, well, I, I don't disagree with you exactly, but I can't really fit that together with what I feel, what I, what I felt for someone, because she was the one. She was. And she... I let her drift away from me. Maybe I didn't put in the work, I don't know, but, well, since then, and it, it was a long time ago, but, but since then, there hasn't been anyone, not like her. And I'm not saying I dwell on her or haven't moved on. I like my life. I, I'm not living in the past, but I do miss the way she completed me. You can't argue with the heart, Pat. Uh, I'm sorry, folks. I had kind of a scary experience last night, and let's just say it's shaken a few things loose. Mrs. Wake, can you tell me about Alan's problems? <sighs> he's more and more out of control all the time. The parties, he's so angry all the time. He's getting violent, he's... Do you mean with you? No, not with me. No, never. I... Sometimes I almost wish Alan would take a swing at me, because at least that'd lead to a conversation he couldn't just march out of. But no. He just, Ellen doesn't really sleep. And the work, well, he's not writing at all. He sits there for hours and just gets more and more frustrated. And I can't talk to him. Yes, tell me, Mrs. Wake. What would you say to him if he'd listen? <sighs> I don't know. I want to say, I look at you and it's not you. Just some stranger who resembles you. Looking out from behind your eyes and I don't like that guy much. And now it's all gonna go to hell. But you don't ever say this. No, no. I've tried, but he's not listening. He's too deep in his own problems, always going on about something else. I'm so afraid I'm gonna lose him, and we're not even talking anymore. He doesn't let me in anymore. He just keeps me in the dark. I'm so alone here, even when he's home. Please help me, Doctor, because I am at my wit's end. Well, if you can just get him here, I'll absolutely do my very best. Yeah, but Doctor, you need to be careful with him. He's not just going to listen to you and cooperate. He's the most stubborn man I've ever met. Well, I'll be sure to bear that in mind. Well, as I'm sure everyone's noticed, that storm we all felt coming is finally here. The boys at the Weather Service reckon it'll last until morning, at the very least. Uh, pertaining to that, let me uh, read that missing persons alert again. The Sheriff's Department's still looking for a Caucasian woman, 30 years old, slim and blonde with blue eyes. She may be lost in the woods, and it's possible she's been injured in a car accident. If you see her, please make sure you get her indoors and call the sheriff. It's bad weather to be caught out in, so if you see someone in the area who maybe looks a little confused, give him a hand, all right? <clears throat> this is Pat Main on KBF-FM, hoping you're all safe and warm tonight. As you regular listeners know, I tend to work through the night, but I'm not the only one. Deputies Mulligan and Thornton are taking a couple of moments off their busy schedule to join me here in the studio. Boys, how busy are you now? Deerfest is almost here, isn't it? I, I bet that keeps you in business. Pretty busy, yeah. Actually, Pat, we've been real busy with other stuff, which concerns an ongoing investigation. We can't talk about that, Thornton. I wasn't going to say anything. I was just saying we got, you know, other irons to fry. And how would you compare your workload to last year's? Things have seemed relatively peaceful to me, but people do tend to get a little wild this time of year. Oh, it's wild, Pat. It's pretty wild. There's been all sorts of trouble this year. Vandalism, fighting, public disturbances. A lot of people gone missing, too. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's pretty much the uh, usual stuff, Pat. Uh, just, you know... Uh, 
a lot more of it. Now, is it just me, or does Deerfest get wilder every year? People seem to be more drunk, at least, or they start earlier and younger. Oh, it's definitely not just you, Pat, but... Definitely, Pat. Hey, I'm talking here, Thornton. Uh... Oh, shoot, I lost my train of thought. Not just me. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's wilder, Pat, but actually most of the trouble seems to be coming from grown men. People who ought to know better, you know? The kids are doing fine this year. Well, that's nice to hear, at least. Boys, I want to thank you for stopping by. I'll let you get back to your patrol. Sure thing, Pat. Yeah, sure thing, Pat. face me. His face was covered in shadows. It was... The Taken stood before me. It was impossible to... For a long time, the dark presence had been weak, sleeping. I heard them before I saw them, swooping down from... At first, I kept finding the pages as if by accident. I stepped into the gas station's garage. The cabin on Cauldron Lake? She asked. Stucky spat on the garage floor and... Rose knew she had been gushing, but right now... Barry Wheeler was bouncing off the walls. Toby knew the smell. It was the man. Barry took another sip of the heavenly coffee. It's true what they say about the fall and the... This was a late goodbye. In spite of its human mask, to dis... Alice looked through the viewfinder. The kidnapper fired his gun one last time. Alice looked through the viewfinder, lining up the shot. Barry had never gotten along with Alice, but he knew Alice. The air in the visitor center was heavy with an awful smell. The visitor center was sturdy, but the impact turned the front of the... At the last instant, I changed direction and threw myself down. The yeah. In that last instant of consciousness, Rusty thought about Rose. I turned the corner, afraid of what the flashlight's beam might reveal. So, Agent Nightingale didn't want to be in Bright Falls. These, on more than one occasion, Alice had tried to explain to me how it... The night had been one desperate situation after another. I was exhausted. When Barry saw the darkness attack the visitor center, it made him... The FBI agent's command froze me in place. I considered. The dark presence had touched the girl to lure the writer in. Rose knew that Rusty was in love with her, and she liked him too. Nobody in Bright Falls seemed to know where Al was, but Rose. Sarah didn't care about the legal threats Wake's agent had made. The logging site was a mess. The modular off. Shadows stirred and the wind picked up as I ran through the forest. There was no misunderstanding. Cauldron Lake was where Alice and... Mr. Randolph liked Rose, that little smile she had. For decades, the darkness that wore Barbara Jagger's skin. Nightingale stared through the broken studio window into the dark wood. Sarah trusted her gut, and her gut said Agent Nightingale was... The pipe wrenched itself loose from the bridge's steel frame. I slammed the door shut right in his smug face. He pleaded. The darkness surged towards me, sucking everything loose from the ground. Rose didn't know how the strange old lady got in her tree. Touched by the dark presence, Rose was lost in a dreamland. Danny had stepped out, but what stumbled back... The bulldozer's engine roared to life. Even after all this time, hearing the Night Springs theme, with Nightingale gone and the night wind blowing in through the broken stone. When Thomas Zane fell for Barbara Jagger, it happened fast. Some of the Taken retained echoes of their former selves. I stared through the bars of the jail cell. Things were never as simple in real life as in fiction. Even behind the closed doors and curtains of his grimy room at the... Maud had checked all of Stucky's rental cabins. There had been no... I tried to hold on to Alice, but her form melted away. 
Vermont. Spying on the rider on the ferry had been a disappointment. The hunters were big, thick-set men, confident and at home in the woods. They were feeling... Doc sat down heavily. He examined Barry and Rose. I lifted the page in front of my eyes and read it. In it, I lifted the page in front of my eyes and read it. In it. Lightning flashed behind the windows of Cauldron Lake Lodge. Torrin. Zane could feel the poems, taking form, shaping things. Hartman kept talking, giving Barry the grand tour. Clear. Hartman followed the fall of Alan Wake with his binoculars. When the right. Hartman knew he was no creator. He had no ambitions on that front. I stared at the Viking paraphernalia that littered the area. For the moment, Barry was just glad he had survived the fall. Mott knew that Wake was smarter than him. Wake had more money. Hartman wasn't happy. Mott could see it in his eye. Hartman hurried down the corridor. He had disliked leaving. Hartman watched as Wake's features slackened. The man was... Agent Nightingale stared at the passed out rider. The man... The storm raged on as the Anderson brothers walked unsteadily away from the... The dark presence followed the choreography laid out to it in the manuscript. It's 1976. Madness reigns at the Anderson. Again, Alice's screams rang in the stillness of the night. When he stopped the car at the Anderson farm, Walter felt relieved. Hartman had never felt as anxious as during the week after Mott. For a moment, Hartman considered strangling the idiot. Mott was mean-spirited. Deputy Mulligan tuned Thornton's chatter out. He didn't think riders were protected. As the deputies hauled Wake and Wheeler away, Agent Nightingale... Nightingale tried to make sense of the manuscript. It was disjointed. Nightingale felt the situation veering out of his control. The darkness that wore Barbara Jagger's face was furious. Cynthia Weaver worked hard, following her... For it to be free, the dark presence needed the writer to finish the story. Alice had screamed until she had no voice left to scream. Around. Barry was in his element, making calls, making things happen. Barry got back to his feet inside the Bright Falls General Store. The story I had written in the cabin had come true. Sarah was almost starting to relax. Maybe they could turn this into a win. Thomas Zane knew he had to remove all that had made this horror possible. Making her way through the water pipe alone, Cynthia was angry. The poet in the muse, lyrics by old gods of Asgard, the chorus. Children of the Elder God lyrics by old gods of Asgard. Children of the Elder God lyrics by old gods of Asgard. The Dark Presence was no longer trying to capture the writer so he could create. The bottom of Cauldron Lake was a graveyard of things the lake had claimed. Zane cut its heart out, but it didn't die. The thing that won. The dark place I found myself in was unlike anything I could ever have imagined. After Zane had gone, I stood alone in the shifting dream that was the... The Poet and the Muse, lyrics by Old Gods of Asgard, the first verse. The Poet and the Muse, lyrics by Old Gods of Asgard, the second verse. The Poet and the Muse, lyrics by Old Gods of Asgard, the third. In the end, Barry wasn't going to shoot Sarah. They both knew that. I'd first heard the poem in a dream, recited by a strange UFO-like light. 